Well, welcome back to the Poe Museum. And I'd like to remind you that you could have already seen this installment of the Curator's Crypt by supporting the museum at patreon.com slash Poe Museum. And today we're going to see something that you might not have expected. Now, a lot of places have Poe manuscripts, Poe books, first editions, even Poe daguerreotypes. But the Poe Museum is the only place that has Edgar Allan Poe's socks. Well, these aren't his socks. These are socks that you can buy at the Poe Museum's online store at poemuseum.org slash museum hyphen store. No, these are his socks. Actually, these are his special Christmas socks. How about we take you down to the exhibit galleries and see his actual socks? Well, these are Edgar Allan Poe's socks. Well, this is one of the socks. The other one's back there underneath his waistcoat. And it's kind of a nice piece. It's a nice silk sock. But when you look closely, you can see the stains and the heel there. And look, a little spot that's been sewed back together. And we know that Poe's mother-in-law, who lived with him, she took over responsibility for doing the cooking, the cleaning. She also did sewing projects to raise extra money for the family. So I like to imagine that she was the one responsible for sewing these socks back together when Poe would get a hold of his socks or something. So she's the one who helped him make his clothes last just a little bit longer. And speaking of Poe's mother-in-law, we actually have her stockings too. And these are some really nice pieces. You can sort of see through them when I hold them over the white backing. They have a spider web pattern sewn into them. So she was goth even before there was such a thing. And really, she had the goth aesthetic going on because she was a widow. She knew how to dress like a widow. The Victorians knew death and mourning. They knew how to properly show respect for those who had passed. And after her husband died, she dressed in mourning, all in black for the rest of her life, wore a widow's cap. We actually have one of her caps right here. And these she kept in a trunk along with Poe's stockings. So she kept Poe's clothing, including that nice waistcoat, up until shortly before her death. And then she left them with her niece. So Edgar's first cousin, Eliza Rebecca Herring. And Eliza was the inspiration for Poe's poem to Eliza. And you might not know about that poem now, but Poe actually seemed to like it quite a bit because he reprinted it several times during his lifetime, including here in the Southern Literary Messenger in 1835. And here in Burden's Magazine from 1839, and then finally in the Broadway Journal in 1845. So he got a lot of mileage out of the poem. And his final printing was right here in his last collection of poems. So it's right here, right at the top of the page. And you're saying, well, that doesn't say to Eliza. Well, that's something Poe did. He liked this poem so much that he used it to meet women and he kept changing the title of the poem as he went forward. So originally it was dedicated to his cousin Elizabeth and he wrote it in her album. Then he rededicated it to Eliza White and here he re-rededicated it to Francis Sergeant Osgood, so the title here is 2FSO. But essentially the poem is this, Thou wouldst be loved, then let thy heart from its present pathway part not. Being everything which now thou art, be nothing which thou art not. So with the world thy gentle ways, thy grace, thy more than beauty, shall be an endless theme of praise and love a simple duty. So really, it's not Poe's best name, known poem, but it's one that he appreciated and he reprinted and reused throughout his life. So how did Poe's socks and his clothing and Mariah Clem's clothing get to the Poe Museum? So Poe's clothing naturally started out with 
Poe. But when he died in 1849, his mother-in-law was kind of left stranded. I'd mentioned she was a widow. She really had no source of support other than Poe's admirers. And she lived with a series of different admirers from Stella Lewis to Annie Richmond in New York, in Lowell, Massachusetts, in Baltimore. And she finally ended up at one point with her niece, the former Eliza Rebecca Herring, who was by then Mrs. Edmund Smith. Now, Poe in his younger years, I mentioned he dedicated that poem to her, also dedicated the poem Elizabeth, an acrostic where the first letter of each line spells out her name. And it said that in youth, you can't tell it from here, but in youth it said she looked very much like his future wife, Virginia. Well, fortunately for Eliza, but not so fortunately for Edgar, her father never approved of him, so it just wasn't going to happen. And eventually, Poe went on to marry his other cousin, Virginia, instead. So Eliza here passed this down to her daughter, and it stayed in the family, and even by the turn of the century, they were getting letters from different Poe collectors like James Woody here, who is writing that he wanted that trunk of Poe's possessions. He wanted to know what was in there, and especially to get Poe's clothing or anything else that could have survived. So there's lots of documentation, family history, letters exchange over the years, talking about what exactly is in that trunk. And that brings us to 1938. And that's when Eliza's great-granddaughter came into the picture. Now, she's a young girl here, and she was visiting her grandmother, or Eliza's daughter, up in Boston. And she said that her grandmother, once a year, would take the waistcoat and the socks and things out of the trunk and show them at one of her weekly teas and say, this is your cousin Eddie's vest, and this is your Auntie Clem's stockings. And she would show them to the family, pass them around, and then she would put them back in the trunk. But one year, 1938, she didn't put them back in the trunk. She just put the trunk back in its closet and put the waistcoat and the stockings on a shelf next to it. And about a day later, she went to the hospital and she never returned. And her husband, they said, was kind of an unsentimental fellow. And when she died, he just said, let's just throw out everything. And her mother heard about this and she said she raced six hours to rescue the Poe clothing. She got there before it was thrown out. The trunk, unfortunately, was thrown out, was lost forever. We don't know where that is or even if it survives. But fortunately, she had the foresight to rescue Poe's waistcoat and socks, Mariah Klim's cap and stockings, and she saved them and took them home. And decades later, in 1997, Tony Suda here donated the pieces to the Poe Museum. She was always interested in having them appreciated by a wider audience, and she knew this is a place where they'd be seen, they'd be studied, they'd be appreciated. And you too can come to the Poe Museum and learn more about Poe by seeing the clothes that he wore. Because they tell you a lot about the kind of person he was or the appearance he wanted to project to the world. And we have these pieces thanks to the generosity of Antoinette Souter. Well, thanks for joining us this week on our exploration of Edgar Allan Poe's socks. We'll see you next time in the Curator's Crypt.